Good morning, good morning to everyone joining us here. My name is Nicholas and I am from Canopy. Here to talk to you a little bit about coping with holiday stress during uncertain times. Now there's just a little bit of housekeeping before we get rolling. I know it takes a few more clicks to get your way over to GoToWebinar, a few more than Zoom or Teams. But I wanna let you know that if that control panel is in your way, just go ahead and click on the small white arrow in the small orange box and slide that over to the side. Also, you'll see there are two handouts available down there. One is a webinar tech help. You click on that and drag it out over to your desktop. You'll have all the instructions to get back on this call. If something happens, you get kicked off the call. Just click on that document, find those numbers. Also, a copy of this presentation is available at that handouts tab in PDF form of this PowerPoint. Go ahead and click and drag that on over to your desktop if that's something you want to keep for reference later. I see those attendee numbers are still ticking upwards. So even if you are just joining us, know that we are here for a worthwhile webinar from Canopy, coping with holiday stress during uncertain times. I'm going to move my little snowman friend here hi there again my name is nicholas and i am from canopy and we're here for a worthwhile webinar coping with holiday stress during uncertain times if you'd like a copy of this presentation go ahead and click on that handouts tab there's a copy of it right there just drag it on over to your desktop all right that all being said let me share my screen and dive into some slides with you coping with holiday stress during uncertain times we are certainly in some uncertain times still things have changed since last year and the year before we're gonna have a different holiday season this year than well the past couple things still aren't where they were five years ago and it's possible that they may never even get back to that but these are some tips and tricks and tactics to help you through holiday stress during these uncertain times first of all holiday stress let's be honest comes from many places, one of which is it's expensive. Whether you're traveling or whether you're not, it can be gift giving, it can be gift buying, it can be fuel costs, it can be just inflation. Holiday stress is caused by it's expensive. And our normal routine is interrupted. Those of us who are employees and having to adjust around some of these holiday parties, holiday events, holiday get togethers, well, that means that the times that we are working, we have to work double hard or triple hard to make sure that we can still get the same productivity amidst all of these schedule shifts. We experience that pressure of gift giving. One of the strongest laws, one of the most influential social laws in our community is that social law of reciprocity. You give me a gift and I'm gonna get you back. You open the door for me and I'll hold the door for you. So the pressure of gift giving can certainly add especially if we're thinking about the expense of gift giving and the logistics of gift giving, getting things shipped there in time. We've got supply chain issues. We've got shipping issues. So there's a little pressure around gift giving. And hey, we're all too busy. Too busy during holiday times because like I said, we have to double up our work or triple up our work to squeeze it into those moments between our holiday events. We may have days off coming up and so we may have to prepare for those days off with doing extra work in preparation. For some of us, there's too much togetherness. Now that might have something to do with your own personal choices regarding the pandemic or safety or social distancing, masking or whatnot, that could be too much togetherness for you. Or maybe it's too little togetherness. Maybe you can't be with those people that you wish you could be with right now. Maybe travel standing in between you and someone you wish you could be near. Maybe it's you're working remotely and you wish that you could be there with the crew at your office this time of year. For some people, it's too much or too little togetherness. And hey, overindulgence in eating or drinking, especially if we're feeling stressed, how many people would uh, you know eat a few extra cookies to help feel a little bit better when we're feeling a little bit stressed? And goodness knows there are <laughs> plenty of options available around this time of year with extra feasts and extra dishes to pass and a potluck and cookie shaped and all different sizes. I won't even mention that drinking, but that's on you. 
you know that there is some overindulgence in that drinking as well as those eggnog bowls get spiked with whatnot. And we may be striving for perfection this holiday season. There may be the pressure to have a perfect holiday season, or maybe this holiday season feels like it's a return to something familiar. You want to bring it back to where it was. Well, in these uncertain times, perfection is tricky. And all of that can make it even more emotionally triggering for us. It is worth mentioning that many of us are suffering the feelings of grief and the stages of grief according, as it pertains to loss. And not just primary loss of the life, loss of a life or the loss of a job, but secondary loss. Secondary loss meaning a loss of our traditions, a loss of our social uh, social support group, the loss of whoever we might turn to in the holidays, they just might not be where they were last time. And that can be something to grieve as well. So for all of those reasons, holiday stress is real, it's palpable, and it's more so than the rest of the year. We talk about holiday stress, and we have to talk about COVID-19. We have to talk about how many people cannot travel to visit loved ones. Before COVID-19, 46% of Americans sometimes are always felt lonely, and you know that number went up during the, during the years of COVID-19. It is also uncertain, these logistics of gift giving. We don't know what the supply chains are. We don't know if we can get what we are hoping to give. And we don't know what we have gotten. We know that we will get where we want it to go through shipping or through USPS. We don't know if it'll get there in time. The logistics of getting what we need and getting it where it's going can also add stress. We have social gatherings or holiday events that are canceled all of a sudden due to, again, these uncertain times we're living in. Maybe there's a spike, maybe somebody tests positive and the whole thing has to be put on hold. Maybe we've cleared our calendar to go to an event and then that event falls through. We are already dealing with multiple changes to our routine because of the uncertain time that we live in. And then you put on top of that, the holiday times as well. That's not our routine. And I tell you what, our brains don't love change. Our brains prefer to have things be consistent, regular, and predictable. So when things are uncertain, it just causes our brain to work extra hard to jump on board with what is gonna be adapting to a new change. All of that is stress due to uncertain times. And we may be feeling it. You may be feeling it. If you're talking stress and anxiety, we feel that very physically. How many of us lock our jaws when we get tight, when we get stressed out? Some of us may be wearing our shoulders up near our ears, their shoulders way up, holding that stress and anxiety in our body. We may feel a shortness of breath or increased heart rate. When we are anxious, we are worried about the things to come. We are concerned about how things will turn out in the, in the next moment. And that can lead to restlessness and sleep problems. How many of us, when our head hits the pillow, we're worried about the next day or the next week or how things are gonna turn out. You may have some mental symptoms of stress and anxiety, one of which that trouble concentrating. You feel yourself jumping from one topic to the next, one task to the next, trying your best to stay focused, but there are so many issues in front of you or so many stressors that you're facing at this time it may be hard to stay focused on one until we get that satisfaction of completion and when we start worrying when we start concerning ourselves dwelling on these thoughts of what might happen what would that domino lead to this and then that this and then that we imagine the worst case scenarios if they can't get here in time, then the party's going to be ruined, then everyone's going to be unhappy, then they're all going to be yelling at me. And you can see how we spiral so quickly. Behavioral, we may be avoiding things that trigger anxiety. We may be avoiding whole corners of our office. We may be avoiding topics. We may be avoiding certain people. We may be avoiding even thinking about putting together another package, another party, or another reason to get together. And that can lead us to feeling irritable. And maybe we get a little bit like a snapping turtle. We're feeling stressed and anxious. Someone's trying to help us. Maybe we say, no, I've got it, I've got it. We get irritable and start snapping back at other people. We're just trying to help. And then of course, the unhealthy coping skills. 
over the past three years, it's very possible that you've picked up some habits, some habits that you wish you could shake, and those habits may be in full force when we are feeling extra stressed and extra anxious. Those coping skills might not be the healthiest for us, and that's gonna lead us to feeling more taxed. That's gonna lead us to feeling more exhausted and less capable to facing the stressors in front of us. We might uh, have some barriers to coping with the changes that are happening right now. We might feel connected to the other people who identified with the old way, right? Our traditions from a few years ago, remember when it used to be. We dwell on that, we lean in toward those relationships. Ah, uh, it's never gonna be as good as it was. We find other people who remember the good old days, quote unquote, and we tend to stick by them for their agreement, for that team sense of things used to be better. That can be a barrier to coping with change because we're here now. We're not back in those times. We're right here and now. Well, people have no role models for the new activity. It's a new year. We're doing new things. We have new stressors from our holiday season and from these uncertain times. And as we look around to, well, how did we deal with this in the past? There may be no one who has gone through it in the past. And so finding an example, finding a leader, finding somebody to model after can be difficult. And we may fear our own competence to change. We have a lack of confidence and a lack of opportunity to feel confident because we haven't faced this before. And so we doubt our ability to adapt to this new type of celebrating in the holiday season. And of course, people are gonna feel overloaded and overwhelmed, you're learning on your feet. This is trial by fire. That can make us feel like we don't have the capacity to adapt to these changes. We may feel a loss of status or quality of life if we can't get that holiday event just the way we want it. Some of us are perfectionists on this call and we feel like we're gonna lose a peg or go down a peg, lose some status if we can't make the holidays as they were. That's a lot of expectation and it's a little bit too much for us. So let's try and focus on the things we can change. We dwell our thoughts perhaps too often on those anxious thoughts about the future, or if we're ruminating on those thoughts from the past things we wish we could have done or wish we could have said, moments we could rewind, wish we could rewind and go back to. We ruminate in the past and it's depression. We ruminate about the future and it's anxiety. But what can we really affect? Let's focus on the things that we can change, the things that we do have the ability to affect. And let's focus on the important things which we can affect. That's where we're gonna feel a great reduction in our anxiety because action reduces anxiety. And if we are addressing something important and it's something that we can affect, we're gonna feel our anxiety levels go down as our action goes up. Well, I wanna ask yourself, when you are feeling these feelings, when you are feeling the stress and anxiety that comes along with these uncertain times of the holiday season, what is my body trying to tell me? With your shoulders up by your ears and your jaw gets locked, what's your body trying to tell you? That you're overstressed? Is your body trying to tell you it's time to take a step back, take five minutes, regroup? Check in with yourself on a scale from one to 10, how blank do I feel? Is this an extreme situation? Am I feeling just a little bit stressed? Am I feeling incredibly overwhelmed? Check in with yourself so that you can get a, you can get a sense of, am I on a path towards success or are things getting worse? Especially if you're in a high moment of stress, Ask yourself, what would happen if I didn't give in to these feelings and chose to sit down for five minutes and accept the discomfort? I'm talking about, what if you didn't argue back to that one, you know, you've got that one family relative who always pushes your buttons. Well, what happens if you didn't react to that button pushing? What happens if you sat down and just whew, accepted the discomfort that they have their own thoughts? and they're not necessarily in agreement with yours, but it's not your job to correct them. Is there another way to look at this situation to gain a more realistic perspective? 
or am I just all spun up? Am I in an emotional state and all I want to do is argue back and fight? Am I in an emotional state or am I in that rational state? If I react now, will I be using my rational mind or my impulsive, irrational mind? Am I going to be making this fight worse or am I going to be seeking resolution? Can I close my eyes and practice slow, deep breathing until I feel calmer? Now, one of the reasons why we suggest slow, deep breathing is because when we are in that emotional place, our emotions hijack our better rationale, our logical center. But if we can do that slow breathing with a long exhale, that long exhale is going to be our body telling our brain that we are not in danger. We do not have to go into panic mode. We don't have to go into fight or flight mode. With this long exhale, we can calm our mind, have our emotional mind release its hold on our logical and rational mind and come back to a greater place of calm where we feel like we are choosing our responses instead of feeling like we are a victim to our own reactions. Not only is that deep breathing an effective way to bring yourself to a more logical and grounded place, but also we'll offer this three-step relaxation. Do not try this while you're driving because number one is close your eyes. We call it my three drops. You're gonna drop your eyelids and then you're gonna drop your jaw. We hold so much tension in our jaw. We're gonna drop our jaw, put some, put some space back between our teeth. Our molars may be grinding together put a little space. We drop our eyelids, we drop our jaw, and the last thing we drop is we drop our shoulders. You may need to artificially raise your shoulders up towards your earlobes and then drop them back down to feel just how low they can go. You may have forgotten how relaxed you can feel. Drop your lids, drop your jaw, drop your shoulders in a simple, three-step relaxation. And here's some more in case you need more. We want to enjoy the holidays. We want to be here and present in this moment, not dwelling on things of the past, comparing today to holidays in the past. Also not anxious about what's to come. Instead, be present in this moment, especially if it's a time of celebration, be present in this moment. If you are experiencing those feelings of depression and anxiety, mindfulness has been proven to bring us out of that mindset and back to a calmer sense. Mindfulness grounds you in the moment. Here's a good one. It's the 54321 exercise. That's five things you can see right now, right around you. Make a list, five things you can see. Four things which you can hear right now happening around you. Three things which you can feel around you. Can you feel your shoes? Can you feel your feet in your shoes? Can you feel the sweater on your back? Two things which you can smell. Hey, it's holiday season. It might be some good smells swirling around your house. And that last one is one thing you're grateful for. So it's five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can feel, two things you can smell, and one thing you're grateful for because we don't want you licking things at work. Another good one is progressive muscle relaxation because we know that stress and anxiety is such a physical experience. Progressive muscle relaxation is going muscle group by muscle group, tensing and relaxing. Tense and hold your toes and then relaxing. Tense and hold your calf muscles and then relaxing. Tense and hold your leg muscles, relax them and compare how your relaxed muscles feel to your tense muscles. You can remind yourself, oh, that's right. This is what it feels like to feel relaxed. Make a gratitude list. Guided imagery is also helpful in grounding you, grounding you in the moment. Radical acceptance means giving up the fight, the resistance to the idea. You may be struggling with, oh, I wish it wasn't this way. I wish it wasn't this way. Radical acceptance is Letting go of that fight, letting go of that wishing it wasn't this way. We are here now. We are here now. Let's make the best of this moment and practice self compassion. Self compassion is different than self esteem. Self esteem says, when somebody outside of me tells me 
that I'm a good person, then I'm going to feel like a good person. Self-compassion is I feel good about myself regardless of what people say around me. Give yourself a break. Check in with yourself. These mindful ways, mindfulness exercises are a great way to enhance your self-compassion, self-love, and self-care. And remember that resilience does not mean handling challenges alone or suppressing emotions. I don't want you to ignore these feelings as they come up. I don't want you to pretend like they are not there. I also don't want you to dwell on these feelings like they're not going to pass soon. Resilience does not mean handling challenging <laughs> challenges alone. Reach out. Use social supports. Now, using those social supports requires us to be vulnerable. If we're asking for help, we might have to admit that we need some assistance, and that's okay. Vulnerability actually connects us to the human condition and brings us closer to other people. It does not push them away. So what do you need to help feel better in these high stress moments and around the holidays, especially in these uncertain holiday moments? What do you need? Logistically, what do you need to get from A to Z to get through your day? What are the barriers that are tripping you up and taking that last shred of patience, those in-between moments. What do you need mentally to feel stronger? Need a little pep talk? Does that pep talk need to come from yourself or does it, do you need to hear it from someone near you? You need to reach out socially. Call a friend that you haven't called in a while, check in with them. What do you need socially? Do you need friends around you? Do you need that support or would you prefer the eyes off of you? Would you like some solitude? What has worked in the past for you? When facing moments of change, what has worked in the past to help you feel better? Why not return to something which has worked for you in the past? And emotionally, what do you need? Do you need a chance to vent it out? Do you need a chance to talk about how you're feeling? Do you need a chance to just take a break and not hear other people's emotions for a while and only focus on yourself? It's okay to take that self-care time. It's okay to take that self-compassion time. This is the season of generosity. Go ahead and be generous with yourself. Let's set some realistic expectations for the 2022 holiday season. We're not gonna be able to do everything that perhaps we wish we could. Let's get realistic with what we can achieve. If someone is laying on you an expectation of perfection this holiday season, that's gonna be too much. Think how to celebrate traditions. Can we sing carols together while on Zoom? Can we connect virtually in some way? Can we do some sort of hybrid version of in-person and virtual? Is there a new tradition to start this year? And plan some gift giving options to take the stress of the uncertainty of shipping, of gift buying, of availability, of supply chain. What are some gift giving options? Can you send a card this year instead? Can you make it yourself this year instead? Can you tell everybody, you know what, this year, we're doing something different with gifts. It's gonna be just the fact of us getting together. That's gonna be the gift. How can we change the gift giving options that benefit you? How can we change the expectations of this holiday season to become more realistic? And how can we adapt our traditions to respond to the, the uncertain times we live in? We you know that oftentimes the holiday season is getting together with others. And we know that sometimes that in and of itself can be stressful. If you are feeling like you are low on compassion and you're having a hard time summoning up the power to care because you've just been spending it on everybody listening to this person's concern and that person's care and thinking about others and you just feel like your tank of compassion is drawing on empty well when we face our uh, friends relatives co-workers whomever we're around in the holiday season one of the ways that we can still express compassion and connect with others even when we are feeling like we don't have much compassion left here are some good tricks. 
tips and tactics. Address the emotional elephant in front of you first. Someone presenting a high emotion to you is looking for you to acknowledge the emotion first. They're looking for your support. They're looking for some empathy. They're not asking you to solve it right now. Before you attempt to solve, let's connect with the emotion that they are presenting first. Now, when we are feeling low on compassion, it can be tough to summon that care. So I suggest the Keanu Reeves to Joey Tribbiani. Keanu always says, whoa, in his films. And Joey Tribbiani always used to say, how you doing? Now, I'm not asking anybody to say that in any other way than just checking in. Somebody gives you a high emotion and you don't know how to respond, but you don't necessarily agree with it. Whoa, that's a big situation. Just whoa is an emotional response. That counts as empathy. And you don't know what to say next? Check back in with them. Whoa, how are you doing with it? You may need to use an empathy bridge to get you out of a challenging conversation. You think, you feel, you want. Oh, you think we should have started 20 minutes ago and you're feeling like we're wasting your time and you wanna make sure that everybody here appreciates how far you had to travel. Well, I want that too. That acknowledges their emotion and brings us right back to a logical place without things getting too tense, too emotional, too split up. Talking to somebody else and they're in an emotional place and you might not want to encourage them. They may have a viewpoint that's different than yours, so you might not want to agree with them, but you also want to keep the peace, want to keep the conversation going and not sever that connection. Reflective statements can be helpful. Reflective statements sound, start with, seems like, sounds like, gotta be. There's no I statement, there's no you statement. Somebody says, oh my gosh, traffic was terrible. You, you don't know what we had to get through. It was awful out there. All you have to say is, whew, sounds like it was awful. That little bit of empathy allows their emotion to be acknowledged without encouraging it to grow or denying that it's there. Summary statements. Say back to them what you just heard, especially if you're facing a broken record situation where somebody keeps bringing up that same point over and over again and you don't know how to respond to it. You're too stressed. You're too anxious to really engage. Just say back to them exa their exact words and see if that doesn't break the cycle of them repeating themselves. I say analog digits because I say put your hand out and list them on your fingertips, the things which you've just heard. It's tough for somebody to argue that you haven't been paying attention when you can list back to them the things that you've heard. And then you can even ask them, did I get that right? Is there something else that's on your mind? For a person to feel heard, that can be the greatest gift we give. And when we are feeling a little compassion fatigue, when we're a little anxious and stressed, it can be tough to summon that care. Sometimes we have to allow for just being heard to suffice as our connection. Do try to enjoy the season. Remember the goal is not perfection. Get your access to media to prevent feeling overwhelmed. Give yourself a screen break. Give yourself an unplugged time. Give yourself 15 more minutes today with no screens, no headsets, no headphones, and see if that doesn't help you feel a little less stressed, a little less anxious, and slow down. Slow and low. <laughs> Savor the moment. We are here, hopefully, to remember this season to be in this moment, to be together, slow down and don't rush it. Especially if these are good moments, slow down. Focus on what you can control and not those elements which you can't. You can't change the supply chain. You can't change shipping time. Focus on what you can control. And know that it's normal to feel anxious. Anxiety is something that happens as a part of being human. It is when that anxiety starts to get too much that we want to call in our support system. Set some boundaries for yourself. Set some boundaries on your time. Set some boundaries on your attention. Set some boundaries on your availability. It's not rude. It lets people know when you are most available. Try to remain in that present moment. Don't just take a photo, set your phone down, and then start worrying about what's coming next. Try to stay in this moment. Remember those mindfulness techniques. Eat as healthy as you can. And we know that's difficult around the holiday season. There are so many sweets and treats all around us. Grab a carrot stick every once in a while. See if you can't balance out that sugar roller coaster that sometimes happens. Seek support and stay connected to loved ones. 
Know who your support network is. Know who your loved ones are. If they haven't reached out to you, you reach out to them. Start the conversation and practice your gratitude. Rather than saying, sorry, I'm late. Sorry, I didn't get that thing. Sorry, I didn't turn out. Thank people for being here. Thank people for understanding. Thank people for knowing that this is important to you. We say, I'm sorry, a little too much. See if you can't flip those sorries to thank yous and pay attention. If your stress and anxiety is impacting your ability to function during the day and your coping skills begin to fail you when you feel stressed or anxious, reach out to mental health services. We here at Canopy, as you can see, there are phone numbers down there. If you're interested in connecting more with Canopy, you can always reach out to us at 1-800-433-2320 and we can see how we can't be of assistance to you in these trying times. But no, the Canopy, as well as I, look forward to you having a healthy and happy holiday season. Do your best to check in with yourself, practice some self-compassion and recognize that feelings come and feelings go, but we're best if we can stay in this moment connected with others. Thank you very much. My name is Nicholas and we have been Canopy. We hope you have a fantastic holiday season, however you celebrate. And we hope that you can keep all your feelings of stress and anxiety well in check. Happy holidays, everyone, from me and everybody here at Canopy.